happy Mother's Day. I, I'm, you're right, Andrew. There's no response at all. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> There's absolutely no response. So you gotta ask it twice, right? Um, next year is my dad's 70th birthday. Um, and the year after that is my mom's 70th birthday. And so about four months ago, um, my brother and I, my brother lives in New Jersey, uh, we're having lunch and we were discussing how should we celebrate their birthdays, uh, but first my dad's birthday. So we first talked to dad um, and he just said, like dad always says, we just want a family get together. He wanted, to, he wanted my brother's family and my family and all of our families together on a family vacation. Then I asked, where would you like to go, Dad? He said, well, since Koji, Koji's my uh, nephew, Koji, my nephew, had never been to Grand Canyon, and Carolyn, who was at Grand Canyon when she was very little, maybe we should go there. I said to him, yeah, that's nice. Um, but I knew he said that, um, not thinking of for himself, he's thinking for us. So I asked, what if we went back to Minnesota? Because I know, you guys all know, we love to fish, right? We love to fish. My family loves to fish. So what if we went back to Minnesota for a whole week, just stayed at a cabin in Minnesota, and by a lake, and fished the whole week? I, I, I was talking to him on the phone. I, I could tell, the next line, I could tell he was, he was saying it with, a little smile, almost laughing, you know, kind of smile happy. I know, you know, you know how it is. You know, you can hear somebody when they're smiling and talking at the same time. He said, huh. He <laughs> <laughs> said, okay, if you think so, if you think so. Of course, he was at first worried about what Koji and Terrellin would do, but both of us reassured him that it'd be fine, that this was his birthday. So I reached out to a friend who's a pastor in Minnesota, some of you know, uh, uh, David Shin, who uh, came to uh, talk at JSR about three years ago. I asked him to ask his congregants where in Minnesota it would be perfect to rent out a cabin for a whole week for a family vacation. The friend returned with an email. He suggested four places. So I'll just post two for the purpose that we have today. This was the first form of information that we got from David, my friend. Now, what's wrong with it? Well, even though it had the location, there is no way we could make a decision based out of that, could we? Right? So before we, my brother and I could make a decision on where to go, I was designated to do the research, okay? Being the older son. So I went to their websites, Okay? First, I had to know where the two places are. Okay, that's the Minnesota. For those of you who don't know where Minnesota is, in the middle of the United States, in the north part of the United States. So, north of Minnesota is what? Canada. Canada. Very good. Canada, where they're going to build a wall. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. So, kind of close to each other, they're in the north part of Minnesota, one is right next to the, right next to the boundary, one is a little south of that. All of the northern Minnesota, you've never been there, it's called Boundary Waters. <clears throat> Beautiful. You cannot use motorized boats there. All of it has to be canoes <coughs> or rowboats. You cannot use anything with gasoline. Okay, it's beautiful there. Maybe we'll go there once. I, anyways. <laughs> so, I know where it is, but, you know, so need more information about this place. Pictures are always a good way to kind of find out what the place is like. So, on the left is Sandy Point, and on the right is Eagle's Nest, Eagle Nest. Now, you're beginning to get a sense of what these two camps are like, right? These two places are about. You get a sense that Sandy Point, you get a sense that Sandy Point is more of a vacation spot for adults from the, from the pictures. And Eagle Nest is more of a vacation spot for families and children, right? They, have, they are marketing to different places. Yes, that's exactly what they market, right? what they advertise. So 
Knowing that, we basically decided on Eagle Nest. I was really looking forward to that, um, that trip, because I love to fish too. Um, but that was before my mom had, a, uh, had to stay in Taiwan until August for treatment uh, for gastric ulcer. So, but the amount of researching that was needed to decide where you want to go, which way to go. My brother and I both wanted to see and to know where we were going before we head down to Minnesota. Very natural. Wanted to know what path the path looks like before deciding to go or not to go there for vacation. It's not only true for vacation. Knowing where you want to go, it is also true for life. A college student once came to me and said, I don't know what to do, Pastor. I just graduated college and I can't find work. I thought that after I got this degree, the work this degree, the workplace would be open to me. But now I have student loans up to here and I can't find work that's worth my degree. I just don't know what to do. I just need a goal. I need a place where I am feel like I'm useful and wanted. Where does God want me to go? What does God want me to do? I wish I knew where and what this journey, my journey, my life journey looks like before I have to choose what to do. Or there was once a wife who came to me and said, Pastor, I think my marriage may be failing. I don't like it. But lately, my husband and I just haven't communicated at all. We get into this argument, get into argument all the time. It seems like every time we would start talking to each other, the conversation would gradually turn into an, an argument. I don't know what to do anymore. I love him, but I don't think I can live with him anymore. What do I do? What choice do I make? Which way do I go? Which path do I take? What does that path look like if I take it? For this college student and this troubled wife, they have one thing in common. They have come to a fork in their life, journey of life. They have to choose a way to go. Which way do they go? But in order to choose, both the college grad and this troubled wife wanted assurance whichever way they go, or at least a hint of knowledge of the destination of this fork in the roadway. What does it look like at the end of this road? They wanted to know what each of the choices lead to. What does it look like at the end of this journey if I chose to go down that path? In today's scripture lesson, Jesus offered the disciples a place to go. In my Father's house, there are many dwellings. I have prepared a place for you. I will come again and will take you there myself so that where I am going, where I am, you will be there also. Jesus is preparing a place for the disciples to go. It is a place, he says, at the Father's dwelling place. You think that's enough, but it wasn't enough for Thomas nor the disciples. Thomas asks on the behalf of other disciples, I think, Lord, we don't know what, where this place is. How can we know the way? What does this place look like? They want to go online and research this Father's dwelling place. What does it look like? He wanted Jesus to fill him in on this place he's talking to them about. The disciples want the description of this place. How big is the room at the house? Are there bathrooms? Or better yet, pictures? They want to know where Jesus is leading them to and what this place looks like. They also want to know how to get there. Can we walk there or do we need to ride a camel? Where is this place and how do we get there? The disciples wanted to know that. Shannon Michael Pater says of this conversation between Jesus and Thomas, disciples want to cling to the perceived safety of a location. 
They want to know where Jesus is going and how to get there with him. The disciples wanted assurance. They wanted a definitive answer that they know where Jesus is going before they agree to go with him or be led by him. But you know what, brothers and sisters? This is not how God works. Because when Thomas asked where and how, Jesus answered, I am the where and how. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you know me, then you'll know where I'm going. No pictures, no nothing. Just me. In our lifetime, we will embark on a journey a lot. And before we embark on this journey, often our question is, what's at the end of this road? What does the end of the road I'm about to take look like? And which route do I take? I want to know the end first. I want to know where this is leading before going on to this road towards this location. That is natural for any human being. And the disciples are no different. But what's interesting about John's gospel is that throughout the gospel according to John, location is used as a metaphor for intimacy of a close relationship. For instance, there are plenty of um, Plenty of sheep and shepherd metaphor in John. Where do we ask? Where is a sheep? The sheep is close to the shepherd, John says. This means not only in location, close to the shepherd, but also close in relationship. This is why when Thomas asked, Jesus, we don't know where we're going. How can we know the way? Show us the way. And Jesus' answer to Thomas and to the disciples is not to show them a physical place, but show them and remind them that they know him. You know who I am. Therefore, you will know where this place is. The location and the relationship closely related, metaphors of each other. What Jesus is trying to tell the disciples and to tell us is that the question is not what's at the end of the journey that we're taking that matters. The question is who is with you on this journey that matters. As most of you know, we're on a journey, aren't we? We're on a journey to renovate this building. What will this place look like? What's at the end of this journey? God is preparing a dwelling place for here, us here on earth. And we have questions. We want pictures. We want assurances. What does this place look like? God, before you lead us down this journey, what does this place look like? I want to know. And y'all, honest truth, we don't know. And Jesus will probably answer to us, what it looks like, it doesn't matter. Whether you know what it looks like, it doesn't matter. What matters is our relationship to Him and to God. What matters is a journey that we're embarking on, that we're close to Christ, that we're staying near Christ, and we have a closer relationship with Him. Today's Mother's Day. What I love about Mother's Day, my mom, is that we enjoy a number of trips. Road trips. How many of you have been on a road trip? Road trips. Anybody? Come on, road trips. Okay. Now, did it matter where the road trip was? Kinda. But what mattered, what the most important thing is what? The food. The food? Yes. You go where the food is, and the most important, who's in the car with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't like the person in the car with you, you're not taking a road trip with that person anymore. Once you found out, right? Come on. 
I mean, if you've never been invited on a road trip, okay, you got to change yourself. Okay, road trip are great, not of the destination. It's the journey to that destination that's, for me, most enjoyable. You talk to the people in your, in that, on that road trip. You eat all the snacks. You share food together. That's the journey. When I'm on a road, I love going on a road trip with my mom because she always prepares the best snacks. <laughs> and of course, you know, being the son, you, 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 anything goes, right? Anything goes. Even though we're in the back, anything goes. I want this, okay. <laughs> but you enjoy the company of that road trip. We're on a road trip, my brothers and sisters, with Christ. Let me say that again. We're on a road trip with Christ. We have a destination. This destination is probably unknown, but that trip that we're taking, it is my hope that Jesus is in the car with you. That Jesus is in the car with us. Which way do we go? It doesn't matter. Just long we go towards somewhere. We have just to maintain on this road trip a strong relationship with Christ. And Jesus on this journey will often remind us, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. 